and then you got to find more bees for the next year. Not a great way to do it. So back in the mid 1800s or so, a guy with the last name of Langstroth developed the Langstroth hive. It's by far the most well-known hive. It's the white boxes you see everywhere. Almost everybody, I'd say probably 95% of people, if you're going to have bees, have a Lang, as they're known in the trade, a Lang. So a Langstroth hive, they're the easy way to do things. I wouldn't say easy. They're the most prevalent, so there's the most resources. If you get a beekeeping catalog, there's going to be all the parts you can buy and people you can do. They are standard in their size. They're a box, and well, the next picture shows the things. But what happens basically is you have these little slats in your hive, eight or ten, depending upon the size of the, how much space you want in it. And they put all those slats in there, and that, those slats each have foundation, either a wax foundation or plastic foundation that's got the little cell drawn on it, kind of carved out of it. And you put that in there, and the bees draw the comb out from those, and they follow the line. They go, oh, this must have been where there was bees, when, bees before. This sounds good to me. <laughs> they draw it right out. And they put all the bees in there. Now, when you get the time to extract it, you pull one of those things out. You take so it's a hot knife, and you slice off the very top of it because they'll come out about a couple centimeters or so above the top of the edge of that frame. You slice down the top of it. They put them into a um, centrifugal Spinner, you spin out, the honey flies out to the edges, and you've got your honey. You then take that same thing that's got all this wax there, you put it right back in the thing, and the bees just fill it right back up, cap it again. It's for production. You get a lot more honey out of this because it's easy to, to, to use. And you can rotate pieces. You can go, hey, you know what, my honey, my bees aren't doing so well in this hive. I'm going to take a whole box of that and set it over on top of this one. Now you've got all the pieces, very interchangeable. If we look here at a picture of them, you have the stand down here at the bottom, the bottom board, this is where the bees come in, what they call a deep super, and some people will do two of these, usually by the end of summer, and this is where the bees live, and they put their brood and other things. Then you've got a little free, um, wire frame that you put in between, and that keep the queen can't go through it because she's too big, so you know the queen's in the bottom level of it. And then you have, turn it back. Um, then you have these smaller boxes, which are called honey supers, and that's where all the honey gets made. And you make one or two of those, they make it full, you pull up the honey from here, inner and outer covers on the top, and you've got your boxes. And you can add, if it's a really high producing, you put another box on top of here, you make more honey, and, they, and it just depends on the size. Now the problem with those is that, for one, because it gets high enough, you've got to, in order to get into the hive, you've got to take the whole thing off, and so you're trying to lift 60, 40 to 60 pounds of honey off the top of this box, pick it up and move it out of the way. If you want to check for your queen, you've got to take each of those pieces off, and you're really breaking apart the full home of the bees. You get lots of bees flying around. This is why the guys who are doing these, and everyone usually has the full body suits they're going in because it's disruptive to the bees. They're not real pleased about this. You're breaking apart their home for a little bit well, until you put it back together. So it is the most prevalent. Someone's going to start out and go, yeah, I'm going to try doing bees. I really like this one. You'll probably end up doing this one. And that's okay. That's a, one of the, you're probably going to find the most resources of people who can come over and help and know what they're doing. This isn't what I use. <laughs> as you know, I wasn't going to follow the standard things. <laughs> I do what's known as a top bar hive. Now, a top bar hive, as we'll see when we go out there, looks a lot like a trough or a coffin. People call it, we actually had them sitting up here on the deck while we were, before we put them in, and some people doing some work on our um, deck, and they're like, why do you have two small coffins in here? <laughs> These little kids drop the ball in the backyard. We gotta get <laughs> That'll teach them. So, but it's a more natural way to keep the bees because all you have is the, the trough, the top bar, and these wooden bars that lay across the top. The little wooden bars have a little point on them with a little bit of wax along the edge, and the bees make all of their own comb. You don't give them a format and say, make it this way. You say, bees, you're bees, make, make comb. Fill the comb the way you want. There's no pattern to it. They make what they want. 
they create it. They determine their own cell size and the comb shape. It's mostly going to be a little bit of an angle um, trapezoid looking thing because that fits the size of the, the, what they like to make. The queen goes wherever she wants. So you don't know if she's in the top and the bottom section. She's going to be usually in the brood area, which are about the first five to eight combs, or it's where the, the queen's going to live. Um, and if you have a full bar of honey, she won't pass that because there's nowhere, there's nowhere to put the eggs, so why am I going way over here? Um, and we'll, there's not as many resources or knowledge locally to help out them. Mm -hmm. Not as many people keep top bars. So you go, I've got questions with my top bar. You don't find as many. You're not moving or anything. No, <laughs> I'm not moving anywhere. Um, so, you kidding? I just have a man cave. Like, I don't want this. <laughs> Did you move? This is no. yeah. so. Um, and to get the honey, you do what's known as crush and strain. You basically take one of those bars full of honey. You get away from the bees. You cut it off the t off the bar. And depending on how much you have, in a five-gallon bucket or something, you mash it up and let it strain through cheesecloth, and it drains out and becomes honey, and you get all the wax afterwards. You can do what you want with this wax. Uh, not too far back here, about a month or so ago, we actually had one of the top bars just from heat or something. Part of it broke inside the, the hive. We had to scoop out all this excess wax and honey and some dead bees, and we strained it all out, got the honey, and then we, I took all this cheesecloth that had wax and bits of honey left in it and everything else, took it out and set it on a table that we have by the bees and just set it there. About three days later, all the wax was gone, all the honey, and there were just some dead bee parts laying around because the bees said they could smell the honey, they came over, they took off what they wanted back for themselves, took all the excess wax back to the hive and used it. They'll use the stuff up. So you don't, though, get as much honey as you do in a lake because... The bees need to spend some of more of their effort to make the comb. They're going to do more of what they want of making comb and all this and not purely production. So guys who are doing this and they want to sell the honey and they're doing all that, they're doing lines. I'm more kind of, it's, it's colloquial known as beekeeping for the bees. You're doing this just to kind of as a fun hobby. You're not trying to make a living off of it. You know, it's fine. Um, this is a top bar. Top bars have all sorts of shapes and sizes. There, are, if you're into woodworking, want to make your own, there are. Can point you to where there are plans online. There's all sorts of stuff to tell kind of the way to make them. Um, I purchased mine, but you can make them because I'm not a woodworker. You keep chickens. Yeah, you can you, in the off season. You'll be in there. Um, this is uh, pictures from my brother for crushing and straining. They just took as a little test. They took two mason jars, crushed up. There's on the far left is the mix up wax and honey, took another jar with some mesh in between, duct taped it, flipped it over, and eventually came out with honey on the bottom, some wax on the top. Mm -hmm. And they've got honey. Yes? Which kind of hive did he have? Your, um, your he's, my brother started with a top bar. He has one top bar mm -hmm. at his house. He now has six langs also. Okay. And they just, two weeks ago, they extracted their honey. You're supposed to extract their, your honey before Labor Day. After Labor Day, you let them make all that they want. So he last, two weeks ago, did his from Six Hives. They got 220 pounds of honey oh, wow. in Wisconsin. So that's a, you can get. So this was, and this was over a year ago that they did this one here for the picture. Um, there are resources out there. <coughs> um, Beekeeping for Dummies is a book. It's actually a really good book. I would not be this guy. Okay, He's the dummy in the Beekeeping for Dummies. Um, backyard Beekeeper, Beekeeper's Bottle. There is a Wasatch Beekeepers Association. Um, they meet every month. They've got a Facebook page with lots of questions, people answers. Very active, very lots of resources. And their website also has a whole forum and those things. Great place to look. Um, Utah County Beekeeper Association also is um, very good for information and such. The, in South Jordan, the rules on being able to keep bees, they are, it's all based on where, on zoning. And so in a, 